Hey guys, and welcome to Let's Play Splatterhouse on the Arcade. As a warning before we get this thing going, this game is notorious for being over the top with blood and gore and violence and uh, disturbing images to say the least. So if you're watching this video with little kids around, or if you are a little kid, this might not be the one for you. You might want to click away now. But if you think you can handle it, we've got a good game on our hands here. Splatterhouse was released in the arcade in 1988 by Namco, and as I said before, is really over the top with its uh, blood and gore levels. So you can imagine in 88 what kind of a controversy this kind of thing would spark. Uh, you'll see more about that once we get into it, but uh, for now, I say we go ahead and get this thing going. The story isn't really explained to us that much. Uh, we basically just see that little introduction scene. But what's going on is these two guys, or not two guys, but a guy and a girl, Rick and Jennifer, are taking refuge from a storm in what's known as Splatterhouse Mansion. And as you can see, things didn't go too great here. There were a bunch of questionable experiments conducted in the past, and uh, now uh, we have to just save Jennifer here. Rick was actually knocked down and has been revived by this little uh, terror mask that he's wearing, simultaneously making him look like Jason Voorhees and giving him uh, superhuman strength. So, we have to fight through hordes of enemies along the way and save our love from the mansion. So, good stuff. Alright, and as we talk about gameplay, uh, it's pretty simple. There's only a couple things to worry about. I mean, you've got jumping and attacking, that's pretty much it. Uh, there are a few different combinations of things you can do, like if you duck, you can do a kick. Uh, like that. If you jump, you can kick in the air. And uh, also, if we'll get a chance to do it here, I'm kind of low on room. If you jump and then do like a down forward and attack, as soon as you land, you'll do that little sliding kick there. Uh, that can be kind of hard to do sometimes, but it can also be really useful in a few places. Like right there, for instance. See, we can just go straight to the end of the stage without worrying about those two. So that's good. And now that we climb up the ladder, this is actually the boss area of stage one. It's divided into uh, several pretty short stages for the most part. Um, of course, they do start getting a little bit longer. Uh, but here, this isn't a boss fight in the uh, typical sense, as in, you know, you're fighting a big guy that's really intimidating, but kind of you just have to survive these things. As you can see, the strategy is you want to stay over on the right um, and just take them out as they come to you, because you can see what kind of bombardment you'd be facing if you were in the middle. I mean, that would just be impossible, so that's pretty much what you have to do. And once you get here, don't relax yet. Oh, <laughs> try to trick you there. Okay, so now we're moving on to stage two. You've also probably noticed our life counter at the bottom that's measured by hearts, like real hearts, not just the heart shape, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, you get one refilled in between stages for a maximum of five, which I have now, so I won't go above that, but uh, the one refill, uh, I don't know, it doesn't help out too much. I, I guess you could, it is helpful, obviously, but uh, there are times where I wish I had more, so, <laughs> but... Anyway, stage two is pretty much just more of the same. Uh, we're still, you know, here in the mansion, cutting our way through a bunch of uh, enemies and getting their green blood everywhere. With some very disturbing things at the front of the screen there. Man. All right, yeah, these guys are really annoying. The things that their heads come off and fly at you. Yeah, those guys are can get to be a real pain. All right, get out of here. I think we killed like every enemy on the stage. I should get some kind of a bonus for that, don't you think? Oh well. So here we have kind of a uh, long, watery hallway, and of course you move a little bit slower in the water, uh, so that can be a little bit weird, but it's actually pretty easy because not a lot of stuff comes at you. I love these guys because of the sound they make when you kill them. Uh, well, I can't, I can't make my remarks about it now until we fight some more, but yeah, you can hit these things, you just have to jump over them. Uh, it's really not that bad. It feels weird because you move slow in water, but really fast in the air. So it can be kind of hard to judge, but with a little practice, you're alright. Okay, here's some more of these guys. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's gotta hurt. <laughs> See, that's what it makes me think of when I hear them die. It's, it's kind of less scary and more of it makes me giggle. But, oh well. Oh. I'd imagine if I were in Rick's shoes right now, I would be freaking out, so <laughs> I guess that works. Okay, and now we're coming up to the boss area of Stage 2. Again, not a large boss in the traditional sense. Uh, but kind of we just have to survive this. As you can see, the house uh, is shaking, and all these things are falling from the ceiling, and we have to avoid them. It's pretty easy to just stand over to the right. You do want to move over to the left just at the last minute, though, so you avoid that one. Then this chair comes to life, and you just punch it against the wall. Rick is pretty much a shining example of how you can solve all your problems by punching them in the face. You know, like when a knife is flying at you, what do you do? You punch it, of course, right? So, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. Then once we defeat that one, two more fly at you. These are still really easy. Just stand in one place and punch them when they get near you. I mean, <laughs> no problem here. 
Alright, and then once we finish that off, this painting is going to come to life and we have to punch it. Yeah, we got pretty lucky there. Then once we hit it enough, the spirit flies out the window. Oh yeah, and don't stand in the middle. That thing will hit you and make you look like an idiot. So, don't do that. Okay, so now we're moving on to stage three. Still have five hearts. Like I said, that's the maximum, which is a shame. I wish I could get six, but oh well. So we're going to get a little bit of variety here. Uh, both in the atmosphere, as you can see, we're outdoors now, and as you can see, there's a gun in front of us, so hey, that's a, that's a welcome thing. Of course, it has limited ammo, so uh, you do actually want to conserve it. I want to have two shots left on this gun uh, by the end of the stage, so... Oh yeah, and is that thing not the creepiest enemy ever? Look at that, man. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> that's freaky. Okay, so here you want to obviously jump over these things, even if you don't know what they are, it's pretty obvious you want to jump over them. Uh, if they touch you, they will uh, grab you with a hand from underneath and pull you down into like an alternate area underneath this that's uh, quite a bit tougher. So, obviously you don't want to touch those. Now, I've only got two shots left on this thing, I kind of <laughs> need to be conserving a little more. If you uh, duck down, you can just do the kicks and defeat enemies that way, so we're going to be doing that quite a bit. Ah, oh, take out that thing. All right, and now there's another gun here at the end of it. Basically, we want to have ten shots by the end for this guy right here. Uh, as you can see, he's got two chainsaws attached onto the end of his hand. So, uh, trying to fight this guy hand-to-hand -hand would definitely not be the best option. It takes ten shots to kill him, so between those two guns, you can get that. Uh, if you did waste the first gun, you can shoot him with the eight shots from the second one and um, do like a sliding kick to hit him twice, but that can be kind of hard, so... I would advise you uh, consume your ammo, or conserve your ammo, rather. Okay, now stage four. This one's kind of interesting, actually. It starts out pretty much like uh, one and two were, but you're going to see by the time we get to the midpoint that it creates sort of a different atmosphere. Number one, you can tell the music is a little different. And I haven't commented on this yet, but the music in this game really sets up the atmosphere quite well. Uh, as you can see, this one's kind of, uh, kind of quieter and more ambient, you know? And as you can see, once we get to this point, there's pretty much nothing around. I mean, we just have to deal with these little blade traps. These things can actually be quite annoying. Uh, they have a very long reach, like much longer than you think it should have. So uh, make sure you time that out right. But yeah, other than that, pretty much all that's coming at us are bats, you know, pretty normal thing. And it's just so quiet, you know, I, I really like it, I do. Okay, so once we get to the end there, we're going to move on to the next part of Stage 4. And this one, you can probably guess what's going to happen. We've got a long hallway with nothing in it and a bunch of mirrors up there. Hmm, let's see. Looking good there, Rick. Shirt's kind of tattered, and you look kind of big and bulky, but... Whoa, holy crap! Yep. Oh, wow, okay, that didn't work out well. Let's get back over here. There we go. Yeah, so obviously these uh, Rick clones are going to be coming out from the mirrors. And these guys can be really irritating, kind of just depending on what they do. Basically, you want to do jump kicks. You seem to be invulnerable to most of their attacks if you're doing jump kicks. The only problem is they can do jump kicks as well. So if they do that, you're pretty much just going to take the hit. It's almost luck-based, really. You just have to anticipate at each mirror. Oh, no, I thought there'd be one there. There he is. Oh wow, got two hits there. That was kind of cool. Alright, there we go. It's taken over automatically now, so we're done with this area. I'm moving on to the next boss. I'm actually doing like a lot better than I ever have here. I'm usually down to like two or three hits by now, so that's pretty good. Oh yeah, and this area is pretty notable to me because I think that chord that we just heard there is like the first major chord of the entire thing. Like I said, the music really sets up the atmosphere, so... All right, and the boss here, uh, pretty typical. I mean, we've got an inverted cross with a bunch of floating heads around it, you know. Well, you see that kind of thing every day, right? <laughs> so yeah, once we get here, we need to just be kind of taking out the heads with the uh, axe. As you can see, things get a little bit crowded here. It can be pretty easy to sort of lose track and uh, get hit, but, oh man. Uh, but yeah, you want to just get as many hits on that cross as you can, because that's, of course, the main enemy. If you want to take out the heads around it, that can be helpful, uh, because those kind of provide a shield. As you can see, they've all started respawning now. So, yeah. This one you pretty much just have to stick with, but there you go. Eventually, you get enough hits in and take it out, and we can move on. So, things have lightened up. Happy-ish music is playing. So, did we do it? Is that it? A 
Of course not. We've still got to go find Jennifer. Uh, so, yeah, we can hear her screaming, which means she's definitely got to be close by. And as we can see, once we get the stage 5 picture... There she is, laying on the couch. So, we're going to be encountering her here, but stage 5 is... In my opinion, the hardest out of all of them, mostly just because it's so long. It really is. There's going to be like four different areas or something like that we're going to be going through. So health conservation is a really big issue here. Uh, if you're running low at some point, you know, it's okay to die, especially if you've got a few lives like I do, um, since your health will get refilled once you start the area over. So it can be a little bit, it can be okay to die at this point. I'm going to try not to. I'm, I don't think I've ever actually come here with five uh, hearts before, so uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll make it through here without dying. That would be pretty cool. But yeah, these little like slanted boards here are very strange. They do really weird things to your momentum. Uh, basically, you keep going down the ramp unless you jump. So as you can see, I've kind of been doing... Um, if you're going down the down slopes, you kind of want to jump so you can avoid the hand that's popping up. Obviously, you don't want to fall in between either. So, as long as you get that jumping timing down, it's actually not that bad. And also, once we get here, we can see we have sort of a uh, split decision. We can either go down or up. I usually like to go down. This is the path I pretty much always take. So, uh, I, I literally just exclusively go down. We're going to be encountering a lot of different forks, so there's a, new, there's a number of different ways actually through this area. This is kind of just the way I like to go. As you can see, we've got another water section, and I think I mentioned this before, but the water sections are usually pretty easy. As you can see, we're already out of it, so I think that's a good area to go through. And this one here is really interesting. It's got my favorite music in the game. I think I like this song the best, but... Uh, we're going to be ki fighting kind of a mini-boss here. This guy, uh, basically he summons all these little uh, zombies to kill us. And if you let him finish his little chant that he's starting, like before I hit him, then he'll bring all the ones you've defeated back to life and you have to kill him again. So basically you want to just keep going back and forth and keep this guy from doing that. Uh, yeah, see that one usually comes right there. I just kind of learned to uh, plan that one out. Sometimes it can be really cheap and just uh, hit you without you even seeing it. A slide kick will take out all of them in uh, one shot, so that can be a good thing to do. But there we go. Hit him enough, eventually he uh, disintegrates, fades away. And we can move on to the next area. Yeah, stage 5 is definitely very long, so... Alright, and here... Uh, yeah, this one can be kind of annoying. We're introduced to these uh, ghost chicks up there at the top. They'll drop that skull on you if you uh, go underneath them, so... You, they can be a little bit tricky to deal with. Um, you can usually just keep walking and avoid it, but uh, sometimes they seem to have really good aim. So it's a good idea to take those out if you uh, get the chance. All right, so I got this thing. Yeah, one thing to note also is if you kill an enemy, like the uh, the dog will actually stop to eat the remains, as you can kind of see there. So you can sort of use that to distract them sometimes, but oftentimes it's just easier to kill them. Oh, there she is. Wow. The enemies just kind of ran away. What happened? Wait, what? Holy crap, what's going on? Oh, man, holy crap. Man, I still think that's just a really disturbing transformation there, man. That, that's insane, but... Yeah, so we've got the boss of stage 5 here. As you can see, if you stay in the middle and sort of uh, anticipate his jumps, uh, he's not that bad to deal with. The problem with doing it like any other way is those claws have a long, long reach, and they will hit you pretty much anywhere, uh, like within this whole area. So really, you need to keep your distance and just hit him when he's in the air. He's going to have a few different phases to go through. The second one is exactly the same as the first, so uh, nothing to really worry about here. Nope. And before you figure this strategy out, if you try to do it like, you know, when he's on the ground, this boss is pretty much impossible, but that's really the way you have to deal with him. Alright, so now we're starting the third stage, and he usually starts us out with a jump like he's normally been doing, and then he'll start doing these little hops, and you kind of just have to anticipate those and get in close, uh, or else that'll happen, see? So now, that's where the battle starts to get a little bit tricky. I didn't want to take both of those hits there, I would have liked to have had five hearts for stage uh, six, but that's okay, we got it. Oh no, so yeah. After we defeat that boss, it looks like we weren't able to save Jennifer. She just died in Rick's arms, so...
Yep, not the happy ending, but of course we're not done yet. We're going to move on to stage number six. And it's not really, you know, like pointed out or had attention given to it. But what's actually going on here is we're in the house's womb. Yeah, that's right. It turns out the house is actually alive. So that's why it's uh, been, you know, giving us all this trouble so far. And this is probably the hardest part in the game, in my opinion. You really want to stay on top of these little bubbles here that are forming. I don't know what else to call them. Um, because if they hit the floor after they've been detached, uh, it'll spawn this little, um, well, okay, there's no way to put this lightly. It'll spawn like a monster fetus. And, uh, you know, see, there's one right there. They'll jump on you. And basically, if uh, one of those things hit you, they'll jump on your back, and you have to shake left and right repeatedly to uh, shake it off before it does more damage. So, yeah, you really, as you can see, they kind of also distract you from taking care of the other bubbles as well. So, if you get too many of those around at once, they can be a real problem. Oh, wow. Ah, holy crap. All right, yeah, I'm not in good shape here. I've only got one hit left. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this off. Probably not. This is usually where I die, so... Uh, I had kind of hoped since I've been doing a little bit better that maybe I wouldn't. And there's still a chance. We're at, we're at the boss here, so basically you just want to sit here and keep attacking repeatedly. Phew, all right, that was close. And uh, you need to just take care of the bubbles and the uh, little fetuses as they come up to you. But other than that, yeah, watch out for the bubbles that appear up there as well. Ugh, it can be really hard to stay on top of these. If you leave this thing alone for too long, then uh, it'll put out a bunch of those bubbles. And uh, you can be in some real trouble. I'm gonna... Ugh, crap. Okay, there we go. Got it. Finally. Phew. Yeah, so that one can be a little bit hectic. Uh, I'm surprised I managed to do it. The problem now is I've only got two life. And the one coming up next is stage number seven, the final stage. So, yeah, I've only got two hits for this. I don't expect to pull it off without dying. But, well, you never know. I, you know you gotta leave the possibilities open, so... All right, and here, this is also different from all the rest. Uh, we've pretty much killed the house by defeating the uh, womb there, and now it's uh, caught, caught on fire, and we have to escape. So, yeah, we've got a bunch of these obstacles to deal with, uh, pretty much just alternating between the flaming logs and the uh, flaming zombies. So, yeah, they start appearing in some pretty wicked combinations that can be kind of hard to deal with. As you can see, there's just stuff flying everywhere on screen right now. And this right here... Oh, man, that's so hard to do. You pretty much can't move forward at all. But once you clear those three logs, we've reached the end here. And the spirit from the mask is going to cause this thing to uh, come up from the ground. And this is the final boss. So, uh, as usual, the strategy is to stand here and punch it in the face. Uh, you can get hit by those little chips that it sends at you. And, uh, yeah, we're in pretty bad shape now. I've only got one hit for the rest of this, but we'll see how it goes. So we pretty much just need to keep avoiding those hands. They can be real problematic sometimes. Ah, yep, see? Those things uh, can be so hard to avoid. Okay, so yeah, you, have, you do have to go through the whole stage again, but you've seen that before, so I went ahead and cut it out. I did get hit by one of those three logs at the end, though, so that kind of sucks, but uh, hopefully we can do a little bit better this time. Uh, so yeah, anyway, as I was saying, uh, the hands can be really problematic, but I found that jumping helps out quite a lot in avoiding those. It seems that it... Man, that's just so unfair. But it seems like it makes their reach like almost nothing. So uh, if you're kind of stuck between two of them, jumping is a uh, good thing to sort of get you out of trouble. Oh, man, that was really close. Ooh, yep, see what I mean? You pretty much have to jump to avoid some of these uh, positions. All right, let's try not to get hit by that this time. I usually don't have this much trouble with the falling things. Yeah, see, sometimes it only does, like, two, and sometimes it does, like, ten. So uh, it can be kind of hard to avoid sometimes, but other times it, you don't really even have to try. All right, so, yeah, we're obviously going to have to keep uh, hitting this guy a lot. I think he's probably a little under half done, but... Ugh, man, I'm never comfortable with this. I'm always nervous about the entire thing. All right. There we go. All right, so yeah, let's just keep this up. I also, I like the music here as well, and I also kind of like that while we're in the little hand stage, there's like no sound in the background, just the music, so that's kind of neat. Ugh. Okay, there's no way you could have avoided that. That was impossible. All right, we can't get hit. All right, and there we go. As you can see, we've got uh, another life from that. We get like 100,000 points from that guy, so it pretty much doubles your score. But that's it. That's the final boss. All right.
right, so we made it out alive, but unfortunately we don't get a happy ending because uh, our entire goal to save Jennifer, we pretty much failed. We couldn't get to her in time. So here he goes. Rick escapes from the mansion. The mask explodes into tiny little pieces, and we walk away from the burning wreckage. And that's it for Splatterhouse. So, yeah, like I said, not a happy ending, huh? But... Oh, yep. So, I, like I said, it's a pretty good game. Um, if you take away, like, the blood and the gore and that kind of shock factor, you know, uh, that it tries to give you, the gameplay, it's kind of average. Uh, you know, to put it lightly, the, the, some of the control, some of the attacks can be a little bit limiting. And the fact that there are certain situations where you really just can't do anything about it, you're going to take a hit, but... Uh, and also, the enemies always take uh, memorizable patterns. They all just do the same things. So, but other than that, I mean, I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty good little game. It's kind of overlooked by a lot of people. It's not really well known. Uh, there is like a uh, Splatterhouse sort of remake that's coming out for the PS3 sometime soon. I think uh, actually here in November. So, uh, just in a couple weeks, in fact. But. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, we'll see what they uh, kind of do to uh, bring the series back. I, I'm kind of concerned about it, though, because, you know, in 1988, you know, this kind of thing, all this blood and this gore, is it, kind of like, you don't see that. You know, what is this? Why are we watching? I don't want to see this. What's going on? But in, in this day and age, you know, blood and gore has just kind of been an accepted thing. So uh, Splatterhouse, if they remake it on the PS3, it might seem just sort of normal, and if they don't really improve the gameplay too much, or, uh, you know, make it anything astounding, then it might not be able to stand up too well against some of the other things, but... Either way, I still really like this game, and I thought it was an appropriate choice for, uh, Halloween, so... Uh, in fact, if, if this goes right, this should be uploaded exactly on Halloween, so... Uh, happy Halloween to all you guys, uh, hope you had fun at your costume parties, or if you went trick-or-treating with the youngins. <laughs> Oh yeah, and that's also insanely loud. I can't hear anything right now. I just went deaf, but... <laughs> yeah. So the mask has reformed itself, and it's pretty much set up the next game. There are uh, two more Splatterhouse games. Splatterhouse 2 and 3 came out on the Genesis. So, uh, of course, this does have some sequels, but... I'm not really going to be getting to those. I just kind of wanted to do this for Halloween. I figured it would be... Uh... Oh, I can't go back. Oh, well, I guess I'm putting in KNN. Oh, well, whatever. But <laughs> anyway, yep, that is going to be it for Splatterhouse. So I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I hope you guys have a uh, very happy Halloween. I hope you get lots of treats, and uh, it pretty much just goes well in general. So I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.